हेलो सिविल इंजीनियर्स वेलकम वंस अगेन टू द इन्फोर्स डिटेल प्लेटफॉर्म माई सेल्फ निशांत गोस्वामी डायरेक्टर इन्फोर्स ग्रुप एंड द कॉर्पोरेटर फॉर यू ऑल सिविल इंजीनियर्स टुडे इज द सेकेंड सेशंस फॉर द टेंडर एंड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट मैनेजमेंट सीरीज टुडे वी विल सी अबाउट द कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ द टेंडर इन द लास्ट सीरीज इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव सीन अबाउट द टेंडर बेसिक्स एंड द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बेसिस टुडे वी विल सी Uh, about the components of the tender what are the main components of the tender why it is important to know to understand so before proceeding once again uh, as usual i would like to request please like the video share and subscribe our youtube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon as you will press the bell icon you will get all the notifications regarding our series okay so we can proceed here about the tender components so what are the tender components why it is important to understand see as a contractor whenever you are going to participate in the bidding whenever you are going to operate the e procurement website related to the tendering on that way time it is very necessary it's a very essential credential to know about the components of the tender being a civil engineer also you should know about the components of the tender what are the important components of the tender because in your life in your upcoming career might we will get opportunity to, to participate in the tender bidding so on that very time it will be very important to know about that components of the tender so i am going to enlist the components of the tender so <coughs> please let's have a look the components of the tender comprise of nit boq tender value tender fee emd stage of bidding pre bid meeting post bid meeting and cover information and bid validity so these are the important components which we should know at the very starting phase of our bidding whenever you are going to operate with the online bidding or when you are going to open your e procurement website on that way time you will get to know about these all components which i have told now let's we will explain we will see in a very serial wise let's start with the nit what do you mean by nit nit generally stands for notice inviting tender see in earlier days even though in uh, present time also in the newspaper the tender notifications are coming that is notice inviting tender in that notice inviting tender whatever the components which i expressed right now so these all important components will be provided in that particular nit even though whenever you are going to participate in online bidding in the e procurement website also these are the important components you will easily see in the notice inviting tender okay so let's see the boq what do you mean by boq what do you mean by boq bill of quantity boq as we know we have explained lots of time in our previous video that boq means what that is bill of quantity boq is a client budget with all the specifications and the procedure given in that boq with the financial rate quotations from the client side for the contractor to participate in the bidding so without boq not a single tender can be released yeah without boq there is a two exception cases there epc tender and the turnkey tender in that scenario the boq will be not provided by the client itself so the boq has to prepare by the contractor only now let's see why it is important to know about the boq because whenever we are going to participate in the bidding so the final rate quotation is against the boq only we have to do now let's talk about what do you mean by the tender value so tender value means the project value the boq amount means from the client client is budgeting the amount client is estimating the budget according to their rates so that amount the total amount the total boq amount is generally termed as a tender value now we will see what do you mean by the tender fee so whenever we are going to participate in the bidding on that way time being a contractor every contractor suppose there are 50 interested eligible contractor those who want to participate in that particular bidding procedure so all the 50 contractors has to reliable to submit the tender fee so tender fee is very important as we are uh, participating in any competitive exam on that very time we need to pay some tender amount that is uh, uh, sorry it's not tender amount it's a examination fee so that is non refundable either you are going to pass or fail so as similar to that only in the construction industry also in the tender related to the construction there is a tender fee that is non refundable okay whether you are going to get the project or you are not going to get the project that tender fee is non refundable now let's talk about the emd 
So what do you mean, mean by the EMD? EMD is very important. EMD generally stands for earnest money deposit. So EMD, what is EMD? Why it is important for the client? Why EMD is generally charging by the client from the contractors? So EMD stands for earnest money deposit. It's a some deposit amount either in the form of percentage or in the form of fixed amount. <clears throat> Before participating in the bidding, all the interested contractor, those who are going to participate in the bidding, before participating in the bidding, certain percentage amount of tender value, that might be 1%, 2%, 3%, 5%, 6% of the tender value, you have to deposit. So that EMD amount will be get deposited by every interested contractors and that EMD will be get refundable only when, when you are not going to get the project. If you will get the project, means if you will select it as a final contractor, your EMD will be get diverted as a security deposit. That In that case also, the final contractor will also get the EMD refund only when you will complete the project according to the client timeline and the according to the client qualities plan. So in that scenario, in that case, the EMD will be refundable to particular final contractor at the time when you will get the comp project completely successfully and the next thing EMD will also refund to those who didn't get the project but that EMD will be refunded with the certain period of time not exactly tomorrow you will get today we came to know that we are not going to get the project or we didn't get the project so we can get the EMD from tomorrow that is not like that EMD will be refundable with a certain period of the time that will be mentioned by the client in NIT only that when we are going to refund EMD like after 28 days or after 60 days so all the contractors those who didn't get the project they have to wait for the certain period of the time definitely the EMD will be refundable for them now why EMD is generally taking by the client why it is EMD is taking by the client charging by the client to make sure that EMD is generally taken by the client to make sure, ensure that the bidding procedure is going to be genuine manner, in a gentle manner. Because many fake companies are participating without, if there will be no EMD, if there will be no any charge. So many fake companies will be, make the competition bidding toughest. So on that very time, the healthy competitions will be not get done. So to avoid that reason, to avoid that cause, the EMD is charging that all the fake companies will get avoid to particip participate in the bidding as we know that fake companies if there will be a fake companies or not eligible companies if they will participate so they have to lose, lose their certain big amount as a EMD so that EMD will be non-refundable if you are you will be not eligible if you are not eligible and you have participated in that case the EMD will be non-refundable to that fake or non-eligible contractors so that's the reason EMD is charging the second reason EMD is charging by the client to convert the EMD as a security deposit of the final contractor at the time of contract the security will be not taken by the client from the contractor because already EMD has been diverted as a security deposit. Now let's talk about the stage of bidding. The next component of the tender, we will see stage of bidding. Stage of bidding, there will be two stage of bidding, single stage and double stage. In single stage of bidding, you have to just, uh, if you are the eligible contractors, you have, means you, you are fulfill the general technical terms, technical eligibility criteria if you are fulfilling. So you can participate in the financial bidding means you are all eligible to participate in the bidding against the BOQ. So against the BOQ whatever the bidding amount we are fixing that is financial bidding that is single stage bidding. If there will be double stage bidding means you have to participate in the technical also and financial also means there will be two credential. The technical bidding will be also countable for your selection of the contractor final contractor and the financial so financial bidding will be also considered as a credential to select the final contractor so if the contractor has to undergo through the two stages that is multiple or two stage of bidding and if the contractor is only participating in the financial bidding if the client is saying that you have to participate in the financial bidding that is single stage of bidding now let's talk about the pre-bid meeting what do you mean by the pre-bid meeting 
so pre bid meeting is generally related to the uh, this you will get in the nit only in nit there will be mentioned pre bid meeting is on this date on this place so if there will be a big project like infrastructure project so in that case client is saying that uh, you have to uh, suppose today is the first of april so on first of april client releasing a nit client releasing a tender notification and in that day you will come to know that bid will be a start from 10th of april and there is a pre bid meeting on date 4th of april so on 4th of april all the interested contractor has to gather and there will be a meeting between the client and the contractor in that meeting all the healthy discussions related to the technical and financial that related to the discussions will be related to the financial that is rate quotations and the technical there will be item descriptions methodology there will be lots of discussions between the client and the contractor if there will be discussions will be uh, concluded as a changes if there will be some changes will be there means if uh, the client is going to consider some genuine changes then the revised boq will be come then on the depending of the revised boq the bidding will be start from 10th okay so why client is generating this pre bid meeting why client is organizing this pre bid meeting because of the reason that the healthy discussion should be on the boq and on the following technical documents that will be make ensure to the client that in the upcoming days if you will get the project final project if you are the final contractor that final contractor will not create any problem during the execution time so before only client want to be ensure themselves or himself that the contract whenever uh, client is going to uh, provide to the contractor it should be in a healthy manner it, it should be in a smoothly manner the project will be run smoothly so for that reason pre bid meeting is there now the next component of the tender is post bid meeting what do you mean by the post bid meeting see generally if there will be a pre bid meeting then there will be 100% post bid meeting will be also there so post bid meeting means what uh, once the bidding will be get <coughs> over so once the bid evaluations will be get over the final selection of the contractor has been already get done the contractor has been already decided that who will be the final contractor of the client so in that post bid meeting client will call the final contractor and with that final contractor the healthy discussions means the technical discussions the upcoming discussions will be get held so what the discussions will be related in that post bid meeting related to the when the crucial dates will be get decided that when we are going to sign the contract on which date you are going to get the project on which date the mobilization money will be provided to you so these all things will be get discussions uh, on that post bid meeting post bid meeting uh, is generally organized by the client to negotiate the bidding amount also if the uh, final contractor will be coming on the post bid meeting on that very day there will be a possibility that the client will negotiate the bidding amount also for example against the 100 crore client value the contractor final contractor has bid as a 98 crore so client will it might be possible that on post bid meeting client will negotiate with the contractor to come down to little bit as compared to the final bidding amount they will try he will try client will try to negotiate so in this post bid meeting this all possibility can be now let's talk about the next component that is cover information so cover information generally two types of cover first is technical cover and that is financial cover as i discussed technical cover means what in that technical cover you will find out all the technical requirements from the clients for participating in that particular tender in particular project if you are going to participate in certain uh, tender so you have to fulfill all the requirements related to the technical for example you should have the turnover of this 5 crore you should have the turnover related to you have to show the bank guarantee you have to show the performance guarantee you have to uh, show the details of the machinery tools and equipments and plants that all covers the technical and financial the financial cover will be means you have to bid the tender against the client boq okay so that is cover information so there will be two cover first cover is technical second is financial now let's the last one is bid validity so as i said there will be 50 contractors those who want to take participate in the bidding so all will be 
all will do the bidding so all the bid will be considered valid up to the certain period of the time like two months three months like that after two or three months the all the 50 contractor those who bid the tender so their bid will be get diminished after three months or two months like that so these are the important components i have discussed in this series second series today in the next series we will see the types of tender in very detail that uh, uh, in that uh, series we will see the types of tender depending upon the locations and the project value and all so thanks for all your patience and thank you so much and once again i would like to request please if you like the video please subscribe and share the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon thanks for all your patience thank you